Bukaki? <laughs> Will I... that make the ASM Awards? Ooh. Tune in a few days to find out. <laughs> I have a uh, great example of a uh, black simile. Oh. Which brought on a black usation. <laughs> oh my God. I got to <laughs> sit down. I know. There's a very strong black usation <laughs> based on a black simile. Well, this is a hell of a way to start us yeah. off on a Sunday morning. I know. I was, uh, let's see. Went, uh, what did the uh, softball, oh, sorry, volleyball. God, I wish it was softball. The uh, <sighs> softball never ending story uh, yesterday with Natalia. Volleyball. Oh, Xim softball, oh, volleyball, boy, volleyball, <laughs> softball. You're finished. Uh, yes. A um, couple things. There's a lot of, uh, I feel like people are fast and loose with people's time in mm-hmm. that. <clears throat> it's like, I just shot uh, two more of these Daily Wire specials, and it's like, you're sitting in the green room, and Jay Leno's just there, and it's like we're not going for two and a half hours. And it's, yeah, Nate just told him to get here too. You know, oh we're going at four thirty. You know, there's a Rob Riggle, or whoever. It happens every time. They're just sitting there because they go, "We want to know where you are," or mm-hmm. we'll just tell you, or it doesn't make any difference to us. We'd rather you, know? you be on our schedule, right? There's way, we're way way too much of that. So what what I get a lot of is um, got this uh, this mind shaft uh, the other day, um, which was. So I've been busy as shit. I have uh, early mornings every morning, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Now we have to go to Corona for the volleyball tournament. Oh, boy. It's never. You get to go to Corona. We get to go to Corona. It's it's funny. Natalia just called it out. I I said to her like midweek, I said, look, where's this volleyball tournament? tournament this this saturday and she just goes i don't know somewhere far and she like went to room because that's <laughs> wow. that's how it works yeah. it's always yeah. somewhere far away yeah. where that's it the- was temecula last oh, weekend God. wherever you are that's a schlep. the thing i always say is what if we lived in temecula then what then, wh- then you got to take it out of town. There must be an exchange program or something. Could, it can but never there's a tournament right down the street. It I don't care. Now, now it gotta can- go to Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> literally had a guy, a family from Bakersfield in front no, of me in line, which no. made me not feel not feel as bad. But and Corona's catch a contractor country. Yes, Corona, Covina, it's just, it's just far. It's yeah. always far. And then they do this one. They go. Uh, so I go. What time we? What time we have to be there? And she's like seven. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like. Mm. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, then later on in the evening it was like eight, mm-hmm. and I'm like, ooh, that's a big hour f- for me. And then later on it got bumped back to seven again. But here's the thing about we need to be there at seven. There's nothing that starts at seven fifteen or seven twenty or even seven thirty. It starts at eight. They just go doors open at seven. They warm up for ten minutes right. and then they play the mm-hmm. game. The the seven. So Natalia gets very like we got to be there by seven because seven is time. Seven, you get there at six fifty five. The place is locked. Right, yeah. like the, the You're doors. The only one in the parking lot. No one's. Oh, there's a bunch of people in the parking lot, but the doors locked. Yeah. Like the place uh, opens. Yeah. So they just go. Yeah, you know, at seven yeah. opens at seven. Get there at seven. What they really should say to all the people that are coming from parts unknown who are getting up at five fifteen in the morning, we're playing at eight. Yep. So. Whatever, whatever that, that means, means whatever that yeah. means to you, yeah. we're going. We're, we're, we're going to do the the bop around <laughs> at uh, fifteen to eight or whatever. But be ready. But anyway, so uh, you drive out there. <laughs> the guy was sleeping in the car all the oh. way out there, which is nice. So uh, you drive out there, and I was thinking of it kind of this way: the uh, they 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 never know when it ends. It just goes. It just it goes. Depends like I on say. if you win or not. Yeah, or sometimes it's just they just never know when the when the hard out is. Right. But you get there. It's basically door to door. It's about five thirty to four o'clock. So it's a you know it's an eleven hour. <laughs> it's it's eleven hours. I am uninterested it in is, this life. It is. It is the. It is the whole Saturday, and not only is it the whole Saturday. But because it started at 5.15 in the morning, you come home, you're just gassed out. You oh, want to yeah. take a nap. It's bedtime. There's, yeah, it's like, I'm not Dinner going to bed, but I'm taking a nap. Yeah. Like, there is no... <laughs> Dinner's negotiable. We're yeah. going somewhere after this. But I just kept having this thought, which is... And, and again, it's the, the new world order. The conceit is you come down and you watch your girls play volleyball 
or between seven and a half and nine hours, mm-hmm. which is unthinkable because we all grew up in a world that was like one seven inning mm-hmm. little league game, probably probably lasts about an hour and 15 minutes yeah. back in oh, the day. Sure. Maybe <clears throat> if uh, I, I would always play pop Warner games, we'd play, you know, first up, first things first, your home field is the closest high school to where your team sort of is. Like Obviously. Ours was North Hollywood High <laughs> yeah. because I was on the East Valley right. Trojans and we're yeah. right there. Later on, I switched to the Sun Valley Falcons and we played at Poly High, which is the high school in Sun Valley. Like your high school is the one that's right. most people could probably walk it from their yeah. from their house. But so it's that. And then the game, I think we played four 10-minute quarters or something like that. But the, the games lasted about an hour and a half or whatever. But if it was at if the game was at noon, you were you were home by two. Mm-hmm. That that's basically right. how it goes. Now the new world order is the parents hang for yeah. eight hours. They just stand in this gym. They get up, they walk around. You might play again that afternoon or you might not. Right. But either way, evening. first game's at eight AM, second one's going off. I mean, the last ones were into the twos, the three o'clocks, so whatever. Now, God, I hope this kid isn't into sports. It's enjoyable, like to watch them play. They're good and, mm. and all that kind of stuff. But it's more like the nine hour conceit, and then the door to door thing being more the eleven to twelve hour range. Plus the non consecutive games, like like you were saying, like seven a.m., noon, and four. It's like, oh, oh yeah. What do you do? You you pile them in the car and take them to no, McDonald's? No, they they go they go straight through. They play straight through. The other, they play straight through with a with a one hour like lunch right. break in the middle, and then the other break is they ref or or flag or they become the flag people in someone else's game sure, for like one okay. game, which is more Act excitement for you because now <laughs> you're just standing there and they're like refing a game. But also. I don't. Does one need to play six and a half hours of volleyball? You know what I mean. Like, could, did, when, what can't we get done? And, the goddamn Super Bowl is three hours and twenty minutes. It's the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. Do we need to triple the Super? Can we just double the Super Bowl? Like the Super Bowl, everyone. I know the Kentucky Derby is two minutes and twenty one seconds, or whatever it is. Ma- marathon. More tune in. A Mike Marathon's, Tyson's fight. Yeah, Mike Tyson's, <laughs> Marathon's two hours and 20 minutes. Like, right. pick the sport. It doesn't last that. So it is all, it's all volatile. And I just, I just sat there and I was thinking, Natalia's good. The team's good. They won every game except for one. But they, like I said, they play like seven games. Oof, uh... I just had this fantasy. I kept going, I kept thinking to myself, I want to get the organizers and the coaches and all the people because for them, they're they're getting paid. Yeah, this like, is their they job. They put this thing on, yeah. and and it's you know it's it's twenty bucks for parking and ten bucks admission. <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing my dad paying admission to <laughs> he watch parks me play. Down the street, <laughs> sets up his own folding chair. Uh, outside. If you would have said to my dad ten bucks, he'd be like, I can see him at free at home, and I choose not to. <laughs> okay, this is really asking a lot. <laughs> so, I just had this weird fantasy. I was just sitting on the bleachers, and I was like, I was like. uh I kept thinking, I want to get all the organizers and the people that put it on together and go, uh, hey, would you like to see me do stand-up comedy? And they'd go, oh, yeah. And I'd go, how about nine fucking hours of stand-up comedy? How about I just fucking stood there for nine hours? And they'd go, oh. And I'd go, and I'm a goddamn professional. Yeah. I'm a fucking professional. I'm not a teenager. I live for this shit. <laughs> How about nine hours? Can we agree that it would be too much? How would you like to watch Jay Leno for nine hours? You, who's your favorite comedian? Pick your favorite comedian. Oh, you like Seinfeld. Would you like to watch him for nine hours? Mm. He's the best there is. Mm. Okay. Well, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The 24-hour wars on chassis. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> and that's the thing. If you're going to play one day for nine hours, that's your season. You better yes. get ready yeah. for the big day because that's, right. that's, that's the season. That's half a season right there. Yeah. It just goes, this Temecula was no. Saturday and Sunday. I don't and like again, this. the call times, again, if you want to get to Temecula Corona, you want to be there dead nuts on 7 a.m., you're, you're up at 5. <laughs> oh, all right. Wait, how long is a volleyball game? One volleyball game. They it it sort of depends Match, what the score is. Yeah, you know, it goes the, all three matches. They'll play like. 
uh, you know, tw- I don't know, first to 25. Uh, sometimes it's best oh, they, three, though, right? Usually, yeah, I don't even. Right. They, they all just turn into one. I was one trying to find a way to make this game. better for you, but I can't do it. <laughs> it it's, it's, it's fine, but I will also say this. So then uh, they got the coffee kiosk in there. Mm-hmm. Can, I, can I say, uh, people, uh, with the advent of Starbucks and all the high end coffee joints, can't just have the white styrofoam cup yeah, and the bad watery the shit that they. That's from 1974. Yeah. You're going to have to up up your game. Yeah. People will pay for it. Uh, get the cup of coffee. It's the watery, crappy, yep. you know, styrofoam cup. Go look for the creamer. The only offering now. Now listen to me, people. How could this go? You say <laughs> the most high end cow, cowgirl creamery. Here's what happens. I, I warn everyone all the time. I, I warned everyone with the iced tea, and uh, they never listen. They never listen. Now, the default setting for iced tea is passion fruit. Yeah. That's now that yep. is iced tea. Mm-hmm. I was waving a flag and jumping up and down 22 years ago when people were trying to mm-hmm. work it in. Uh, the only coffee, the only creamer they had was uh, Max Pat. Are you what you doing there, buddy? French <laughs> vanilla. That's no, uh, that's all. Oh, so, I got those all. empty baskets. It's, there, there, <laughs> there was no other offering. They didn't use the other stuff. You can go <laughs> tight on it. Uh, it's just the French oh. vanilla. It's that, the stuff that, that, that is uh. that is the creamer now. Right, that what was cream? The standard. What was. Iced tea is now passion yeah, fruit. What is one. creamer is now French vanilla. And it's French vanilla that need not be refrigerated. No. Yeah, it's it, always a little scary, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It does not. And also, you got to think, let's, let's, let's think, places never do this. Who is your clientele? Mm-hmm. These are, first off, these are people who have the means to drive right. for 90 minutes on a Saturday yeah. morning. There, there's like... Skinny ass, fit white couples in there, like upper scale. Mm -hmm. You got enough, if you got enough money to cart your fucking daughter around all creation on Saturdays and she's in this, this is club. Right. This ain't the high school team. You know what I mean? Like the average income of these people are, you go outside, it's a bunch of super high end SUVs, BMWs, and Teslas and stuff like that. Nobody wants this shit show. For coffee. No. Nobody, these guys aren't home. By the way, you got a 15 year old daughter who's big. She, they have like private coaches right. and trainers and stuff. You've never seen the, 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 the body mass index is you've never seen a, a healthier group mm-hmm. of skinny ass white people who are into yoga and soul cycle and right. stuff like they don't want this creamer shit. Yes. Is right. it possible that? Yes, of course. Although, you know, the, the fit people you're describing, the discerning folk are from parts unknown and ex- no offense to the people of fine people at Corona, but could this be a Corona thing? Nobody's from Corona. <laughs> no, I mean, set the people the, set up the, yeah, the, the staff. Event. Oh yeah. Sorry. They're, uh, Oh yeah. They're we, locals <laughs> that, but that's, this is, this is my thing. And then they put the 14 year old chick behind the uh, counter and then you go, do you have any real cream? And they go, we have that. Yeah, you know, we do. They, right, it's right there. I, it always, it, it, it drives me nuts. It's, it's like when someone's having a party with a bunch of adults and they order, they go, uh, you know, let's go to Domino's and get the thick crust pepperoni. It's like, mm-hmm. that's not who these people, no. that's not who know these your people audience. are. No, you're on. And, could and they, they just- had a whole cooler. They had a whole goddamn cooler oh, filled with Gatorade and everything. Just to have, throw some cream in there. Someone swing by the Seven Eleven, pick up some cream, and throw it in there. And if they want to make their lives even easier and upcharge a rich white guy, just grab those boxes from Starbucks. You know, with the bladder of coffee. Mm-hmm. It, they don't even have to do all of this. Yes. Um, so that's, uh, that's that. a fun day for How you. How was the volleyball? Yeah. It was good. Well, they, they play, man, and they're they're loud and they're they're into they it. Cheer. Are there? Any- it's funny yeah. though. I will say this: you can, you know, how I always say, um, I always go. I, it's something I always found really interesting, and I just applied it to all of life. When you know, I always tell the story about seeing the expose and how they figure out the drug sniffing mm-hmm. dogs and how come they're all the different breeds is one breed better right. there. Like we go to the pound, we look for the enthusiastic dog. Yeah. That's who we turn mm-hmm. into our drug sniffing dog or gunpowder sniffing dog. And you'll see it out there. 
they'll be the one girl who's the spark plug. She's yelling at all the other chicks. They're always slapping each other. Okay, okay. And the ball's in the air, and they're yelling, yelling, pushing, yelling, shoving. There'd be like the one pinball girl who's Mm -hmm. bouncing around. You go, oh, she can make a great fucking employee, Mm -hmm. and she's going to give her daughter eating disorder one day. But But, but before then, you want to hire that (laughs) chick. You want that yeah. one. And that one's can... got the motor. Oh, and at fifteen, you oh, it's, please. It's on. It's on display. Like She's the kid in the play that knows everyone's lines. Like she knows. Me. Yeah, and nobody me. and nobody coaches that. It's nobody her, tells. Lip reading alone. Now they're all pretty pumped up and they're all pretty good, which is fun. I was gonna say, how could you find the enthusiastic puppy in that group? Even I, they're always getting in huddles, put their arms around each yeah. other and slapping the floor and popping up again, and they're all into it. Natalia's into it, and it's it's great. But there's, you'll still see the one that's moving and, and talking to everybody and running everywhere. And it's like, oh, yeah, we got a, we got a little Cracker Jack yeah, there. Yeah, a possible Olympian. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah, she's a little short. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, so we got that. We got the the girl we're talking about who was farting into the bottles. Yeah. She's uh, she's calling in. Yes. Stephanie she sent over some samples <laughs> for us to try before the interview. Yeah. The uh, all right, so uh, I have other thoughts on that. But what is in that? What is in that cream? What is the ingredients of that that uh, French vanilla? Water. Frank and vanilla. You try it, Gina. Oh boy, water, cane sugar, palm oil contains palm oil. <laughs> oh, Vinny's already pissing himself. French. Uh, it's French. Two yeah. percent or less of sodium caseinate. It's just water, sugar, and palm oil. Yes. is basically what it is. Dipotassium phosphate, carrageenan. Mond and diglycerides. By natural, the way, are we yeah. not? Are these real words? <laughs> are we not fat enough? I think we're coffee fat is what you drink when you're trying not to get fat. Yeah. Why do we have to get fat drinking the thing that we're trying not to get fat with? We figured out a way to shove palm oil. Uh-huh. <laughs> literally figured out a way to put palm oil in everything. Yeah, water, sugar, and salt. And oil are the yeah, well, main ingredients. Stay awake. That's all we need this for. Oh. And then there's natural and artificial flavors because we don't have to name those. <laughs> right. Sodium steroid lactylate and salt and yeah. casein. By the way, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is another word for sugar. If I'm if I have my Vinny hat on. Oh really? Yeah. I just never i I just never know why people don't get which way the wind is blowing. Like no one ever mm. goes that no one wants this crap. Or if they do, put two of them out. Sure. But this is a different group right. in here. All right. Uh I have my uh black usation. Oh yes. yes. Black caused simile. by my black simile. <laughs> Dawson has the uh article. <laughs> Fordham University lecturer fired after mixing up names of two black students. Uh-oh. According to The Observer, Christopher Trogan, a lecturer at Fordham University's English department, was terminated because of his response to an incident on September 24th where he mixed up the names of two students who walked into class late. The students allegedly felt disrespected after the incident. This is a big, this felt disrespected thing, which I've been fucking yapping about for 25 years for you know, 18 year olds or 16 year olds or 19. This is not progress. People not having a bunch of, I felt disrespected by what someone's mistake or, or do we know, see, it's the, I felt. And then the part where you can't tell them they weren't disrespected because they they fucking felt disrespect. No one gives a fuck how you feel. I've been trying to fucking march this out for a long time, but we're not doing it. We're doing it like I we're felt, the they felt, they felt. Do you, do you think the guy who lost his job felt disrespected? I was just going to say, you know how a teacher feels disrespected when people walk in late? I'm glad that fuck got shit canned because <laughs> later on in that article, he's like, I've always tried to create an atmosphere of inclusivity and stuff. Fuck you then. You got fucking eaten by your own, you shithead. Well, the two believe the mistake was made because the two are both black. Trogan emailed his students in the Cosmopolitan class. But by the way, class. It, 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 it is because they're both black. They mm-hmm. look similar. Yeah. Like it would if you were Asian or Hispanic or if you're only two white kids in there who were gingers or something. It, 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 there's two things that can happen. Well, you're black, but it's not because of, of slavery. You're, it's because you have physical characteristics that look to this guy interchangeable mm-hmm. or swappable. Or well, first things first. You can screw up someone's name. Sure. You, you can just do that regardless mm-hmm. of who they are. But what you do 
oftentimes is if you had a couple of Filipino kids and they have the whole process is you look at someone and you try to recognize them. Right. Right. From whatever features, tall, short, black or white, heavy, thin. That's Joe Coy. That's Chris yeah. Laxamon. Right. And it could be too. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Could Sorry. be too heavy set guys in there. <laughs> right. And then when you don't know people very well, you have a small window yeah. to try to figure it out. But you anyway, see them yes, once a week, it, maybe it is, twice. Mm-hmm. It is because they're black. Go ahead. Well, he emailed the class to address the mix-up, apologizing for what he did. <laughs> the offended student assumed my mistake was because I confused that student with another black student. He said in the email. I have done my best to validate and reassure the offended student that I made a simple human error. This is the biggest mistake ever. You don't have to prove anything. She needs to stop being fucking late and sit her fat ass down. This is the problem. He did his best. All right. Sorry. The article said that the two students who were involved in the mix-up, one of them claims that Trogan repeatedly used the wrong name throughout four classes. I felt really disrespected. They said... They said, oh, this is the other thing, too, everyone. Without any callback or explanation, so. When we're given everyone the they's and the all the different titles and all different, one more thing for everyone to fuck Shut up, up and then you can feel disrespected because he said she or him instead of they or Z or whatever the fuck you're identifying. I, you understand, this is one big obstacle course to trip people up sure. to then claim you're disrespected that's why we should have fucking never never gone down this road but here we are and what better target that not target but what better subject to get confused than a professor these are not young people by the for the most part they're right. just kind of stepping into this world now where it's pronouns and it's right. and, and like i think you said uh, a few minutes ago these, this isn't like home room if you're in college you see these kids once a week there's a lot of faces to memorize i wouldn't know but go ahead <laughs> i felt really disrespected they said she felt this i did not feel she heard they, they. because every time he misnamed me i would tell him and it just seemed like he would brush it off or that he did not care. The email Trogan sent to students also outlined, quote, everything he has done for minorities. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Good douche. See you on the sofa. <laughs> and stated that the English class is, quote, centered specifically and explicitly around issues of justice, equality, and inclusion. Oh, how's that justice going, Pops? Trogan added that his entire life has been focused on the issues of justice, equality, and inclusion. Can, can I say this about whether it's a professor or a politician? Uh, you work my route, which you go, hey, I got nothing against the blacks. Sure. Let's not do this thing where I've dedicated my entire life. Because you're going to get it either way. You <laughs> you're know getting I mean? it anyway. No one believes, you know, uh, when I was nine years old, I marched in Selma, <laughs> Alabama. You weren't that into it 10 minutes ago. Don't give me you've dedic- dedicated your entire life. Look where I got you. Yeah. Having to now defend I, your record. I'll bet you put more time into your baseball roto league than you did defending <laughs> Black people are, are your to uh, equality. But anyway, here we go. Eva Badowska, Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Sciences and Associate Vice President Arts and Sciences, told Trogan on September 26th that he was suspended from his job with pay and benefits, oh. noting that he was under investigation by Fordham University. <laughs> investigation. Badowska notified Trogan that he was terminated on October 29th. Uh, However, Trogan said in an email to students following the termination that he wasn't informed of why he was being investigated until his termination. Quote, I was never informed of the charges against me. Charges. Nor of the nature of the investigation of which I was the subject. Hmm. I was kept completely in the dark. Trogan told the newspaper that in the letter of termination, Badowska cited the basis of his firing was the email he sent to students on September 24th. The other student involved Never in the mix-up. Never read it down, up, people. Never read it down. That's right. Chantel Sims said that Trogan's response to the incident wasn't necessary. It seemed a little excessive. Like all you needed to do was say sorry. It would all have been fine. We were not actually upset so about him mixing up to, our names. Wait, so which is it? Just say you're sorry and you won't be wished into the cornfield. It was more so the random things he would throw into the response. Fordham University spokesperson declined to comment. You know, there's another there's another interesting thing, which is um, I always say everyone always goes, I think they think I'm kidding. I'm not (laughs) when they go, uh, you know, well, the toughest profession I mean, the highest stress profession is uh, police officer, cops, and they kill themselves at a certain. I go, yeah, because they have a gun on them all the time. It's a it's a 
it's a suicide accessible. machine that's strapped, strapped to your hip. In. It's a lot easier to kill yourself when that thing's literally on you yep. all the time. And now the job is stressful and all that stuff. But I still think if you took mailmen and you said you got to you got to be strapping mm-hmm. all that, there'd be higher incident so of suicide uh, with mailmen. They used to go postal. They went postal. <laughs> yeah, they don't go postal anymore. Yeah, that's over. But um, if you start a bunch of the, so, you know, the thing that's going on in colleges is it used to be, you know, students and professors. And now there's all this faculty, these, the, 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 the offices yeah. of inclusion yeah. and stuff like that. These people, now you have a whole army of people left to investigate right. this stuff, a yep. place to go and say someone's getting $375,000 a year to make sure there's a diverse population and that there's no incidents involving race. It's a person can't be like the Maytag repairman. Like they got to go to work. Every, they got to go do something. You know, so I'm like, <laughs> what do we got? Uh, this professor did nothing. Okay. Oh, all right. Good. Start the investigation. Start yeah. a file. You got to earn your pay. Let's, let's be doing something. Start yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not, he didn't do anything. All right. But we're not doing anything either. Right. And we're here. I don't want to call attention to that. We're getting paid. Yeah. So we got to, we got to go to work. We yeah. got to go find something. And you know how you talk about, we've talked about this with sexual assault and how that, that, that phrase has cast a much wider net than it used to. Mm-hmm. Well, when I hear, uh, a, when, you, when you know, if Dawson pulls a paragraph saying these allegations and these charges against a professor, I'm thinking, oh, shit. You know, is, are we talking rape? Are we talking, did he, did he strike a student? <laughs> Screw their names up. But it's the other part that we need to get back to or figure out or get our heads around all the race discussion, which is, he definitely screwed you guys up mm-hmm. because you're black. That that's why he did it. But it's not because you're black and he doesn't like black mm-hmm. people because you look similar to the other girl. And by the way, if it was a black male and a black female, I don't think he would have fucked those up, but even though it's two blacks, one's a male. So he's looking for things that are Consistent in both of you, yes. Completely no way. I'm going to throw this out there with no way to prove this whatsoever. But it struck me as hunch was the the, the student they were talking about a little bit longer, who goes by they and was it was the main uh, offendee. Is it possible they're transitioning? Mm. Would that have confused him even more? Like if they registered as Tim, but they're attending class as Tina. For right. example, mm-hmm. I mean they, they were could they, be. They, they it's have, not in not in the article. It's not in the article. But Just once. To, Guess. Once we start down the road of the pronouns, we've you're already a self-selecting group of mm-hmm. douchebag a-holes that are looking to trip people up around you so that then you can correct them later on. All right. Um, I have a uh, – we got Mark Gergus clip. Mark Gergus, he was in here on uh, Friday, and I was talking to him, and he was talking about Weinstein, which uh, mm. I found interesting, who's in L.A., by the way. Oh, I yeah. Know, I don't know when visiting hours are. As I say, he's, he's become bi coastal. He's here, still flying private, but th- <laughs> this, this is a little different. But uh, flew Chartered. out here privately. And uh, yeah, Mark had an interesting thing about um, bail versus custody. I want, I want to get into that in a second. I had never thought about it. Yeah, I had I no thoughts. I don't know where this is going. Well, it was, it was interesting in that he has a lot of clients. Some are out and mm-hmm. some are in. Mm-hmm. And he said uh, when they're in custody, mm-hmm. no bail, uh, the process is, is much more difficult and, and it makes his job harder. Interesting. And in a game of, you know, I was talking to him, I was saying like F1 race, it's thousands of a second, you know, mm-hmm. try, try, courts just tense here and tense there, mm-hmm. just trying to sway them just a little bit. It, oh, it was, like you, optics of, well, he's in custody as opposed to he's a free man. Well, I, I it's probably in here. Well, I don't want to repeat okay, myself, okay. but I, well, yeah, I'm saying one is if you're in Bel Air, you're yeah. going to the, yep. you're going to right, jail. If you're, right. you're already in jail. Right. It's not that hard to keep someone, you're going home. Right. Or, or not going home. Anyway, I'll play that in a second. First, there's uh, simply safe when you're home to feel safer. Better time, no better time than now. This week, our friends at Simply Safe are giving the Adam Carolla Show listeners access to their holiday deals 40% off. 
This is a great company. They make uh, a great home security system. It is clean. You'll hardly even see it. It works on batteries, but the batteries last up to 10 hours. No pulling wires, no drilling, no mess. Everything you need, indoor, outdoor cameras, comprehensive sensors, round the clock, around the clock uh, monitoring by trained professionals. Named best home security system 2021 by U.S. News and World Report. You can customize the system. You can do it online in minutes. You can get free custom recommend- recommendations. Simply Safe's biggest discounts of the year. You get any system starting at just over a hundred bucks. No long term contracts or commitments while supplies last. Take forty percent off at simplysafe.com slash Adam. All right, we'll take a break. Stephanie Mono, the uh, jar farter. <laughs> It's going to be in. I got that uh, call in. I got that clip of Gargos will do all that after this. You're a pussy, Mr. Lynch. A loser to behold. Your iPod's full of fish songs. You almost never leave your home, Mr. Lynch. Even though you're 34, you act like you're 79 and a half years old. You're a fat ass, Mr. Lynch. You have breadcrumbs in your beard. Your cholesterol's 350. You smell like a low tide pier, Mr. Lynch. Given the choice between riding cross country with you or turning gay, just call me a queer. Wow, I love the hits just keep coming around this time of the season. Age is well. All right. Was that a self burn by Lynch? (laughs) It had to be. Oh, wow. Stephanie Motto is on. She's the one we're talking about. Uh, It's made over $100,000 selling parts in a jar. Only in America and parts of Germany. <laughs> Stephanie? Oh, my goodness. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I am recovering from a day of making fart jars. Yeah, let's uh, get into the nuts and the bolts of the fart jars. Now, first, we know you from 90 Day Fiance. Is that correct? Yes. I was part of the first same-sex couple to go on 90 Day Fiance. So... In the past, I wouldn't have had to ask, but are you a lesbian? No. So I'm actually bisexual. See? Um, That's why I got to ask. And my relationship with Erica was actually my first, you know, relationship that I ever had with a woman. So it's pretty crazy. Do you, uh, I, I hadn't thought about it until about 10 seconds ago, but uh, is it the, the fellas are buying these, these farts in a jar, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you know what your demographic is? So it's pretty much all men. I think up until this point, I have not received a single order from a woman, which doesn't surprise me. <laughs> and um, I think it's mostly men between the ages of 25 and 45 oh. that are buying my farts. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are people who've been fans of mine for a really long time. How long? I mean, how long have you been on the scene? Oh, my gosh. So I've been a YouTuber for about seven, eight years. Oh, okay. So a lot of these people have followed my YouTube channel since the beginning. They've mm-hmm. gone over to my Patreon. They went over to my OnlyFans. And now I am the founder of a new 18 and up platform called Unfiltered, which is where I'm selling the fart jars. And a lot of them have migrated over there. And, yeah, there's always been a demand for weird stuff on my social media. I've been getting people asking me for squished face fetish, uvula fetish, and I mean, like, the list just goes on and on. And I noticed over the years that a lot of people wanted farts. So finally one day I just caved and I said, you know what, I'm going to give the people what they want. She's on need in the market. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what's a squished face fetish? By the way, how many fetishes are I, oh. when I, I grew up, there was like four. <laughs> There's two new ones. Yeah. Got There's new feet. Ones, yeah. There's food. There's like feet, there's feet, feet riding crop. There's like feet, food, and leather. Yes. That, that's all we have. We don't have yeah. any squishing cockroaches and right. stiletto heels or right. 
fish oh, or God. face fart jars, face squishing, face yeah. squishing. How's it's, that go? It's never ending. I feel because people are so overexposed to things on the internet that it's like unlocking parts of their brain that they never had access I've, to before. I've said it so, once. I, I've I, listen. I, people used to think I was kidding twenty years ago. I was like, this is why I believe the Richard Gere gerbil story. Yeah. You can't. You're banging Cindy Crawford. Where do you, Where do you go? Yeah. Where do you go? What, what oh, next? I got a Raider at. Yeah, okay, good. I did that on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, down, down great you, for you've sure. Been, you've been plowing oh, yeah. the hottest chicks on the planet for a yeah. long time, and you wake up next to the best looking human being on the planet. Where, where, where are we going from there? Gerbils. We go full gerbil. Yeah. That's, so that's how the mind works. I think, just from a quick, I, I'm on spankbang.com. Um, face squishing is what it sounds like, like squishing someone's face. Mm. Yeah, yeah basically. Just and I've been hand. doing it for this one guy for a couple of years now. Every few months, he hits me up. He's like, hey, can I get a new Squish Face video? And, I mean, is it comfortable? No, I don't like doing it. I don't enjoy it. I charge yeah. him like $500 to do it. But, um, you know, it is it is what it is. It makes him happy. Yeah, no, I, people always just, well, uh, honey, if you don't like doing it, it doesn't feel good or it doesn't feel right. What the fuck? You think roofers will have their job? <laughs> <laughs> they, get, they get 14 bucks an hour and they go up to the fucking roof with a bag of tar. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone has a That's job they don't like. Yeah, and there's a price. You're getting paid. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. You do a lot of corporate gigs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, not at this moment, but you know, if I was invited to a corporate gig, I'm not sure how I would be able to price that and what that would entail. Like, do I have to go into an auditorium and just like start letting it rip for everybody? I think so. Uh, yeah, that's what they'd expect. Yeah, I don't know. I think that the only thing that I'm really considering doing right now in the more like public space is I'm releasing a batch of jar fart NFTs I in a couple about of that. weeks. <laughs> Yeah, so just hold on. that is my. I I, I, I love say this I say this spirit. all the time. I I have it. My own kids. Um, my is there is there such a thing? When I grew up, it'd be like, you better hit the books, or you're gonna be out on the streets. <laughs> but you're gonna be a bum. You know, what I mean? you go to college. Is there such a thing as telling someone you'll never make any? Uh, no. no, there's nothing. Everything's on the table. It could your there's no idea that your kid could pre- present. Meaning, you know, it's like 14. I want to be an astronaut, or I oh. want to be a. Oh, you'll never become a. Remember when we were younger, like you had tattoos. Like good luck getting a job. Yeah, now. Oh, yeah it's like, tattoo. Good luck getting a job as a chef without a tattoo. Right. right. That yeah, you'll be unemployable yeah. because you have a tattoo and you didn't go to college. Right. Who's how can you make money? Right. You'll be digging ditches your whole life, you know. Jesus Christ. I, I have Sorry. a question about the jar itself, Stephanie. We we debated mm-hmm. this the other day on the show. I saw that you put a flower petal in there, and then there was some concern that that might sort of bastardize the scent. Is that a real flower? And how do you feel about that? So I put the flower in there because I like that customers can see that there's something physical in the jar. I feel like it like reassures them that like that it's not just an empty jar. Get it? Mm. And yeah, the flower sure petals are in fact completely fake. They're fabric. Told you. So Gina scented. knew. Thank you. Gina knew. Yes. Yes. So the fabric, the the like the woven fabric, I feel like the scent really clings onto it better. So. It's not like the smell can really escape out of the jar. It's going to stay attached to that that fake fabric so, flower petal. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank this you. Is, this is all stuff we're worried about. Yeah. I'm also, <laughs> I'm just sort of thinking if I spent, and I know we have a Christmas discount going on, but if I spent 100 bucks for one of your farts, I uh, have sort of the same conundrum I have as someone gives you like a $500 bottle of wine. Like, should I open it? Right. Yeah. When right. is the right time? Yeah. Once should it's I, gone, it's gone. What, maybe when I have guests over, <laughs> if I have an event, we'll open the right. fart jar. <laughs> New Year's, Valentine's Day. <laughs> on the other hand, I kind of like it just up on the rack yep. there, up mm-hmm. on the bar. Mm-hmm. I like to look at it. I want to throw it in the recycler, yeah. but, I, I, but I do want to indulge. So do most of your mm-hmm. customers, you know, they take a quick hit off it and Put the oh, lid back on real quick, or they have a like a a, a party, like right. a, a jar a, opening occasion, party, yeah. like an occasion, <laughs> or does some I just think, like to look at it? I think that a lot of the men who are purchasing it want like that girlfriend experience, so they can see me online, they can hear me online, but they can't smell me. Uh-huh. So sure. you know mm. what what is like the most close you can feel with a girlfriend? It's when you're like hot box in each other in bed mm-hmm. on like 
you know, a Friday night or something after going out for Mexican. It's like, I think that a lot of them are in their imaginations when they open those jars. So maybe they're like, you know, in their more intimate moment, maybe they're, I mean, just to say it bluntly, jerking off. Sure. And, and they might, you know, in that moment before orgasm, open the jar and mm. smell it. Oh, Adam, I, I got the solution mm. for uh, your, your, like, the quandary <laughs> is real. Uh, do I enjoy this now? Do I enjoy it all at once? Do I enjoy it with company, etc.? cetera? It's, no, this, this, this is a real quandary I've had with wine and I presume farts in the future. There's an invention. Mm-hmm. There's an actual invention. There's a real thing. I have one. Uh, it's called a Coravin. And it's a needle. It's a literal. It's a needle that you put on top of your oh, wine, uh-huh. and you can extract it and replaces it with air. It's got a compressed right. air, so mm-hmm. you do, it doesn't oh mess with the, with the freshness of the wine. You can pour yourself a taste, a, a, a glass, right. two glasses. If you got a nice bottle of wine, you're holding on to, or presumably a jar of farts. So uh-huh. Stephanie can do a bundle. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's actually brilliant. It's Honestly, really brilliant. like if that was something that I could add to my product, yeah. I feel like customers would appreciate that, but. You know, it's all about like cost and shipment and packaging. What yeah. would be the most? How does you know, all right, and now yeah. now look? It's my job to ask the tough questions. You guys want Corbin's? <laughs> if, if I, that, Brian, you've never been more correct in your life. This is awesome. Um, <laughs> if you, what's the product called again? Cordovan. Is it a name, name brand? Yeah, the, I'm sure there's imitation brands, right. but the ones I the industry standard. Right. So frozen. you have a very expensive bottle of wine. You want a glass, but you don't want to drink the whole bottle. And you want to save some for your wife yeah. who's out of town or something. You do that with the farts. If I ordered a fart jar from you, would <laughs> I be able to smell you if it showed up to my house a week later? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I make it my priority to make sure that like there's quality control and I have not had any complaints from any of my customers yet. The only person that's complained so far is somebody who received their shipment and it came broken. Uh But I replaced their item within three days. Uh I made Mm -hmm. sure that I use the fastest, most like priority shipping so, yeah, nobody's been complaining. She stands behind her product. If you do, <laughs> priority shitting. If you do get a, pl- a complaint letter, please forward it to me because I would love to see the complaint letter. Like, dear sirs, I opened this jar and it didn't smell at all like ass. I was, my family and I were devastated. Yeah. I, I was well, humiliated you know, people, in front of my people children. Do ask for proof with the jars. Oh, they want proof. Certification. How do we do that? Yes. Well, the only way to prove it is with a video. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them want a video that is alongside their jarred fart, and it's just basically of me making their their fart jar. You upsell them. But that costs extra. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. it costs a little extra. You know what I'm realizing right now? Stephanie and Andrew Yang have a lot in common, the Mm -hmm. former... uh, presidential hopeful you when you know there's not a lot of double talk that we're you know we're getting solid answers you yes. ask stephanie how it's done and she will tell you and yeah. i respect that yes. yeah now in the vid we saw that you were experimenting with your diet mm-hmm. i i uh, listen i i know i know this from 25 years ago when i was taking a custom van with jimmy kimmel and big tad and his brother t chance thrasher to vegas and uh, Jimmy had told me uh, he was going to destroy these guys in a van. And I said, uh, what would you eat? And he said, uh, I ate raw clams. I ate a, uh, ate a jar. And again. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, food for thought. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he said, I that ate a thing. horrible. Yeah. So it gets worse. Yeah, he, I think he had raw clams and, oh. uh, and, and like pinto beans or something, and then like a Coke or something was his thing. <laughs> right. Now, of course, as a legend would have it, we got in the van and we were barely out of Toluca Lake on our way to Vegas. And uh, <laughs> we didn't know that T. Chance Thrasher was a farting machine who mm. was, was basically like, an MMA fighter who doesn't want any trouble, but you somebody somebody, somebody, bring somebody it. just yeah. fucking bumped him at a bar right. and spilled a beer on him. And, with Kane. Told him to go fuck himself. Told him to go fuck himself. <laughs> and so Jimmy worked on his first fart as we we're like going up the freeway on ramp uh, out of Toluca Lake. And uh, T Chance just looked over his shoulder and said, Oh, is it on? 
Oh, okay. And then completely destroyed <laughs> me and Jim were begging for our lives. For, for five hours. For five oh hours in a, in a van. That sounds absolutely horrible. It, it, I mean, I just try to make my farts smell pleasant, so I'm not going to be eating clams or anything like that. Oh, okay. Like, I wanted to have a nice aroma. How do you do that? What's uh, Have you experimented? What's the cocktail? I, I have. I have experimented, and I now know Fiber One bars are the enemy. You do not want to be eating any excessive amount of Fiber One bars. You might, like, end up in the emergency room if you do. Mm-hmm. There goes the um, endorsement I just do a lot deal. of protein powder, mm-hmm. vanilla protein powder. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of Greek yogurt. I take a lot of probiotics, okay. and I do take a fiber supplement. Mm. Okay. And uh, and in you vid, will you we take a vid of all these things, a verification mm-hmm. video? Oh yeah, absolutely. Ooh. And some people are requesting a certain diet for me that they want me to follow. But you know, in order for me to follow a specific <laughs> diet for an entire day and also affect the other batches of farts, yeah. you know, I do have to charge extra for that because it's like this person's basically telling me like, hey. This is what I want my farts to smell like, but these are also what the farts are going to smell like for everybody else. So corrupting. It's a, it's I, I, a really yeah. custom order. When I was a cabinet maker, I tell everyone, if you can find it at Ikea, get it. Because yeah. if I have to build it custom for you, <laughs> right. it's just going to cost 10 times as much. That's that's the truth. Absolutely. And you're, you're saying the same thing to your farting clientele or fart inhaling clientele. What, uh, yeah. with, without the... Uh, you don't, you don't, I, I'm going to probe a little bit, but you don't sound like you have delicate sensibility. So when you do the fart video, is it uh, mm-hmm. underpanted, uh, bare assed? I feel like a thong is going to get in the way, might corrupt mm-hmm. things. What are we wearing? Good point. Mm-hmm. Well, there's been one person who specifically wanted me to wear latex, and I. <laughs> I expressed to this client that that might affect the ability of the fart to actually enter the jar, but they didn't care. Mm-hmm. They wanted me to wear latex. latex it was like very, yeah. very important to them. Not getting through that. Yeah, like latex and looks like when you get that blister on the sidewall of your oh, tire oh. and it's bulging out. <laughs> yeah. you know, big hernia. That I don't even know if I get any of that, but all right. Yeah, it was it was the easiest thing to well, do. What, do you, what, um, what would you normally wear? Sorry. Just a skirt usually or, you know, or I will do it with like a thong on and I'll just like shift my thong to the side. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, one thing's for certain, every single video, I try to look my best. I try to look cute because... People are there. They're fans of, you know, my appearance. They are what what, what I like to call Sid, and I am their their dream girl. Wow. They want my part. (laughs) And... uh, (sighs) Dan, first off, uh, I don't know what your relationship is with your dad, but uh, does he have thoughts? Mm-hmm. Is he encouraging? Is he your biggest fan? He's either putting the labels on or is he's not he, talking yeah, to you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He's so, in the garage on the folding um, table. My dad, bless his soul, he's actually passed oh, away. Oh, <laughs> so. When he killed himself? Oh, my God. No, Shortly after I the difference video dropped. This call started. Like seven years ago. Mm. Um. But my okay. dad knew one thing about me, and that was that I was a very resourceful person, and I'll pretty much do anything I can to, you know, succeed and get to the level I want to in life. And so I think, although he'd think it's weird, he would be he'd be proud of me. I mean, I, I live a very nice life. I have a beautiful home. I have several nice cars. And I, I think I've built a pretty nice life for myself off of my personality and my farts and my appearance. It's got a hundred K just rolled. I got to say, you know, when we do these uh, during the next uh, presidential campaign, when they have the big convention for the Republicans, mm-hmm. them, you know, they always do this thing where they trot people out. He was an orphan in Ethiopia. Right. And he came to America and he didn't speak the land only. I would trot you out as the only in America right. kind of thing. Yes. Yep. You know what I mean? Where you could else be anything. but yeah. in America? Yes. There are other places you could go if you're from Ethiopia and crack out of life. But right. this, this is this strictly is American. Yeah. This is authentic. Yeah, we're number one. How's your oh, yeah, mo- How's absolutely. your mom doing? I, mean, I got to find a. I have to find a relative that's alive. Is your mom alive? 
So my mother actually came to this country from Czech Republic when it was under <laughs> communist rule. Oh, and in so America. my my mother is a Czech immigrant. I also grew up for a period of time in Czech Republic. I'm like, yeah, this is the American dream, and I feel like it's the country where you can you can go and do anything, say anything, be anything you want to be. And my mom is just really happy because she now lives a certain kind of lifestyle because of the money I'm able to make. Uh huh. God bless. So you know she's she's living pretty. I got her a I got her a brand new Porsche Macan that she's driving around, Jesus. and she you know has all nice luxury. I gotta, I'm gonna talk to me, my daughter. So like enough with this volleyball. Like, I don't care what you do. It's gonna buy me a Porsche. Um, <laughs> so um, how do um, <clears throat> so see at a certain point, no matter how successful you are, you're just one woman with one asshole. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just like mm -hmm. a plumber. Like, no matter how good right. that guy is, at some point, he needs to get a second right. van and outsource. a second crew. That's yeah. how you make That's how you make real money, right. you know? There's Not only, just Porsche McCann like, money. Yes. Yeah, there's only so much Greek yogurt right. and time in the day, you know? Have you thought about sort of getting a crew of other beautiful women who can, you know, in, in, uh, who might have a nice footprint on the internet? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, my or how about a successful podcasting dude? This Who's, past summer, what's that? Sorry, go it, ahead, Stephanie. Uh, the the new platform that I developed this past summer it's called Unfiltered, and it is an eighteen and up community of beautiful women, and a lot of them, after seeing my fart jar success, have also started to sell their bodily functions. So, a lot of girls on there are selling their jars of it, their pubic hairs in a bag and and things such as this. So I think, yeah, like I definitely have like a team, a crew of people who are doing what I'm doing. I'm mm -hmm. doing the fart jar NFTs, which are virtual. Mm -hmm. You can just imagine the smell. So there's, you know, there's so many different ways and so many different directions you can take this business in. All right, Stephanie, I have to ask uh, our own Gina Grad mm -hmm. here a yeah. hypothetical. Sure. She's newly married. Um, your, uh, new husband. Yeah. If you found, I'm going to give you an A or a B. Okay. <clears throat> um, fooled around with somebody, not, not intercourse, okay. but, uh, you just found out that, uh, there'd been a little macking going on with somebody, mm -hmm. another gal. Mm -hmm. You could see the text on the phone. Oh boy. Versus, uh, G going to the mailbox, uh, opening a rando package. I'm, I'm guessing you don't have giant, you know, giant <laughs> fart mascot. It's, this all has to be discreetly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Frank. The fart, you know, you, it is, this has to be discreetly right, 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 shipped. Right, right. You think it's a Christmas yeah. gift for you that yes. was sent from yes. uh, home. You open it up. You find the fart jar. Yes. A or B. More <laughs> off-putting. Yeah, which which one? Which one's gonna which one's getting you two to counseling faster? <gasps> well, I'll tell you which one I'd prefer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, here we go. Not only <laughs> do it is it is B with a bullet, I would much prefer. <laughs> but I if that's something he was interested in and I wasn't able to provide it, I'd make it his Christmas gift. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's so sweet. You know what I mean? Rather than I having it, I'm, it. And, I, yeah, yeah, uh, I don't. opening his phone, which I can't because it's an Android. I don't know how you work it, but seeing like he, him having an emotional connection with yeah. some friend that I went to dinner with, or getting a fart in the mail. Are you, are you kidding? All right, hundred percent, Stephanie. Women. Okay, all right, Brian, you understand? I think me. you speak for most women. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because yeah, we don't want yeah, we don't want that emotional. Affair, no, yeah, but or, if if he if, some... and if he asked me to do it and I just couldn't comply or was unwilling, I would I would want that need met in another way. So I would buy it for him. Well, pardon me, Stephanie, yeah. but if you want to just sort of break it from the act to the act, yeah, fart in a jar the in the ass, mail. That, the ass to the act. Yeah, that's that's nothing. But you have to kind of picture what has motivated him, what's lurking in his mind. You know, he's going to be sniffing Ooh. that thing, crying and beating off in 20 <laughs> minutes. So. That's good. That's less work for me. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying that may speak to some underlying issue. There may be other things at work here. Yeah, that's but if he's, if he's text banging some broad, that's uh, underlying just too. Just making out, maybe a little kiss. Yeah. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah, I you're mean, making, you're proving me right. Okay. 
I say if he wants to I go think, shut the I door with a fart, a fart. Yeah, a fart is a fart. She says. <laughs> yeah, can't argue that logic. <laughs> it's <just> a fart. <laughs> I'd say that. there'd be some other <laughs> underlying issues that may crop up in the Fine. relationship. Fine, but I'd rather deal with those underlying issues that he has some like fetishes that he needs to deal with than me compete with the you know his his coworker. Well, I will think this. My last yeah. argument is. The part where you maybe get drunk and make out with some coworker yeah. or something like that at a Christmas party, that is essentially male behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, any, any, oh, we're all, we all have that within us yeah. and, and it could happen to anyone. It's all, it's pretty universal, mm-hmm. which wouldn't necessarily affect. Other decisions and other facets of life. I would argue that the fart fetish would you would you would find other things along Lurking. the way. Uh, that that's all. That's, that's my the only best argument. Iceberg yeah. part you can see above the wall. I'm willing to roll those dice. Who is your Who is your customer? I mean, we male, right? Twenty five to forty five. Heter, hetero, yeah. I'm guessing. I don't know why. Oh yeah. The gays don't like Very a little ass straight. smell, but uh, um, I think. A lot of them are um, looking for some kind of, like, financial feminine domination because not only do they like the fart in the jar, they like the idea of that, like, they just, like, that you just you just made them spend all this money. <laughs> I love that. That's what I, I can get oh, into that right. line of work. Yeah, financial so, humiliation. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Something like that. Yeah. That's a, uh, it's. No, no, I never really thought about this angle. I was trying to figure out, like, who these mm-hmm. guys are. And I've, uh-huh. I've always, you know, when you talk to the dominatrix, they're always like, it's white guys, it's mm-hmm. captains of industry, mm-hmm. it's rich guys. Because I always said, like, you, you don't get a bunch of day labor Latino guys in there. They're, they're, <laughs> they're sick of being bossed around shit all day. beat out of them all day, right. stacking cinder blocks. Now, <laughs> now they, you want what exactly. they don't have. So this is a form of, you're definitely, if somebody, you're, you're the bitch. You're somebody's bitch if you just spent a hundred bucks to smell their fart. A thousand. Or oh, a yeah. thousand bucks For to sm- sure. and watch them fart and yeah. smell their fart. I mean, you're definitely the bottom right. of that of that group. Yeah, literally. Interesting. Uh-huh. Mm. I never thought. So that's probably the angle for a lot of these guys, right, Stephanie? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. 100%. And, you know, you'd be so surprised to find out how many men are actually like this. Like, it might be your your male guy. It might be your next-door neighbor. Like, I know some high-profile people in Hollywood might that, be my that, that, I could, that I've talked to. Brian's in the squirting <laughs> videos, it turns out. I have no right. fucking we found idea. That out. No goddamn idea. How long have you known Brian? I've known my half my adult life. Uh, now I know what to get him for Christmas. <laughs> Anyway, amazing. I, I guess you're right. Yeah, I, you're right. I would definitely be surprised. Yeah, to find out how many guys, Chris. Oh yeah. Well, we don't have the whole crew here today, but <laughs> anyone scary. here would this, would this be a good gift for you? My, yeah, I I got it. You know, let's let's let, let me be uh, full transparency. Um, I realize I'm like, talking about French vanilla mm-hmm. flavor and mm-hmm. coffee, and I'm like, I like the flavor of coffee. That's in an iced tea, or I like, and I don't want any fucking cranberries in right. my oatmeal cookies, and I don't <laughs> want all the highfalutin. I, I like a good brisket. Mm-hmm. I don't want your fucking, I don't want you garner with every, I don't want, I, I realize I'm that way sexually. I need a maple glaze. Oh, I see. Mm. Yeah, I don't want the donut mm. with the red, white, and blue jimmies on right. it. I just want a fucking old-fashioned, right. a buttermilk donut. Right. I'll dunk it in some real coffee. Yes. That's what. I want some pussy. I'll dunk my dick in it. <laughs> like, that is... <laughs> That is that is me. I feel the You're same square. Uh, square. Same way with food as I am with the architecture or yeah, something. I just and, and pussy. I just like boom down the middle. Here right, we go. Right. Nuts and bolts. Never gonna get tired of a good pulled pork sandwich or a hot chick. Ne- don't Amen. need all the the weird side you don't accoutrements. Need the gimp mask the yeah. co- dog collar. But I guess guys pork? sexually go that way. I'm pulling my pork. <laughs> Sorry, but Stephanie <laughs> evidently. A lot of guys don't roll that way. And you know what? No. I would be more inclined if if there was like some business uh, student, you know, say a grad student from uh, an Ivy League school. I would be more inclined to talk to Stephanie about business than oh, I would yeah. that guy because oh, yeah. she has she has figured this out clearly. Yeah, we. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> I think one thing, the one gift I have is I'm very good at marketing. Mm-hmm. And I never went to school for it. I just think that, you know, when you see a demand for something, you just go for it. And yeah. like p- 
people see that this is in demand. And one thing I always do is I set the price high because yeah. I know people will pay that. No, price. it's 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 interesting what what you know. And um, <clears throat> you know, I was thinking about it. it. I grew up. I'm older mm-hmm. than you, and I grew up in a day when the marketing part of this somebody marketed something called the pet rock Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it was essentially a social experiment. Could I say, can I sell 2 million units of a rock that I will call the pet rock? Right. And you can find it, Chris. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it had little eyeballs or anything attached to it or anything. It was just a pet rock. It was, it was a rock. And that person was a genius, but you, my dear, in a in a sad 2022 version of the pet rock, this is where we're going as a yeah. society. Mm-hmm. But this is also the same kind of marketing. Mm-hmm. And if, yeah. if you think mm-hmm. about it, who was the guy who marketed the pet rock? Maybe you guys could get together and. St- <laughs> it's literally a rock in a little nest of hay, and it comes in one of those old school vet carrying like cat boxes. Oh my god. Well, maybe I'll start developing a, a pet fart. A pet oh. fart. Yeah. Right. And you yes. need to pay, he's passed the baton to you because he's dead. Uh, yeah, so it's Gary, Gary Dahl. Gary Dahl, oh. he, uh, he thought of the idea while sitting at a bar listening to friends complain about their pets. He joked that he had a perfect pet, a rock. It lasted for about half a year, but he made him enough to become a millionaire. With walking leash. <laughs> He's got a tally oh board God. with one million units. Brilliant. Salt. That guy's my hero. <laughs> what were the little things that ended up just being like t- tiny micro shrimp, but y- like you put them in water like little sea creatures? Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. Ooh, That's another sea monkeys. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't eat those. Those will ruin the flavor, <laughs> the bouquet of your ass. <laughs> Uh, Stephanie, let me uh, give you a plug here. I feel like you should be a regular on this show. I, I, I feel like we've just scratched oh. the surface of Stephanie Motto. Uh, you too. Thank you. Uh, how do I say your YouTube uh, page? Stepunk? Stepanka? Stepanka? Yes. Stepanka. That's my check name. Oh. Um, yeah. And uh, you can uh, Twitter and Instagram and TikTok, Stepanka Motto. Uh, yes. And also make sure to check out my Fart Jar NFTs. You can follow my Fart Jar NFT page on Instagram. It's Fart Jars NFT. Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was really nice talking to you guys. Bye bye. Once again. I, I, I know, but I, I've, through this show, I've been exposed <laughs> to a lot of young female entrepreneurs that you thought were going to be crackpots. Right. And uh, turns out, no, no, they're entrepreneurs. She's good. She's good. Pet rock guy, man. The <laughs> <laughs> spirit lives on. <laughs> Pass the baton. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what a pet rock costs, but we we couldn't afford non novelty toys. Like this fell under the heading of well, you're not really, you know, that's a gag. Right. That, but that's it's it's they, it's eight bucks. Doll sold over one million pet rocks for four bucks each, and wow. now they're between twenty and thirty. Oh, uh, Amazon, Etsy. Yeah, interesting. All right, uh, let me tell you about concrete. Myth, creatine is just for bodybuilders. Fact, creatine is for any fitness routine. Concrete, 100% stimulant-free pre-workout supplement. Concrete, patented creatine. HCL is the favorite of elite informed athletes. All the strength and endurance benefits of creatine without any of the negative side effects like cramps, diarrhea, bloating. And uh, it's the only creatine females should use to increase lean muscle. No water retention, no bloat. I've talked to Drew about concrete. It's like, yeah, take take creatine. He does. Uh, I take concrete now. Your brain uses about 20% of the creatine in your body, so it helps fuel your mind as well. You give the uh, nice gift of health this year with Concrete, right, Dawson? Take control of your health, both body and mind, building a better you with concrete. Register now at concrete.com slash podcast. That's C-O-N dash C-R-E-T dot com slash podcast to receive free membership to Planet Fitness for an entire year, plus a $500 Walmart Visa gift card. Available now online and in-store at Walmart. Concrete is truly changing the game. All right, we're going to play... 
take that tune. We're going to see how much of a horrible song I can take. Or maybe I like the song. These guys have all chimed in. I haven't heard any of the songs yet. We got the Reasonable Doubt, Mark Garagos, Weinstein clips to play. And we'll do that right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Adam and crew, Tim from Phoenix. Listen, the other day you guys were talking about bad Christmas songs. I know the Paul McCartney's horrible and all that stuff, and the Annie Lennox, but the worst Christmas song by far, and I'm a Bruce Springsteen fan of all of his songs, is the Bruce Springsteen, Santa Claus has come to town. This abortion train wreck is nothing but him laughing and singing the same lyric over and over and over again. I can't stand it. What do you guys think? You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Yeah, it doesn't make the list normally, but you're right. And also, what's annoying to me about that is, I don't know where you guys are at with this. I like a little banter from the stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like, uh, you know, Dave Grohl's up there and he's Mm -hmm. making fun of Mm -hmm. the drummer or something like that or whatever. But at some point, it feels a little presentational. Especially when it makes it onto the single. You know, that, that, uh, I don't mind being there and hearing that. It's a delight. But I'm trying to listen to Chris music and now I got Bruce going, hey, you all been real good. It's like, ah, yes, we get it. (laughs) I, I always have this. I always said if I was in a band at, at rehearsal, we wouldn't rehearse any of the songs. We All there we would banter. rehearse is the move <laughs> where in the middle of the song, which sounded like shit because right. we didn't rehearse, I would walk over to the bass player. I We'd share a moment. I'd talk about something, lean over, and then we'd just both shake our head <laughs> laughing and walk back to our spots. And yeah. the whole audience could well go, wow, what did they say? Yeah. That's so cool yeah. up there. That's all I would do. We would just rehearse walking <laughs> up. I'd do it with the drummer. We'd, we'd have big laugh, yeah. you know, you know, head shaking. Yeah. Oh, that's a good. Were we talking about the chick in the first row? We'll never know. We'll, you'll never Call know. Lead singer? That's no. right. All right. Uh, let's see. we got Take That Tune. We'll see how many, uh, how much of this I can take. These are, well, we'll set the table. It's time for Take That Tune. The game where we see how long Adam can stand listening to the auto-tuned bullshit that some people call music. Now, let's see how long Adam can Take That Tune. All right, well, depending on who you ask, Christmas time is home to some of the best or worst music ever. Well, today we're going to travel through multiple decades of holiday cheer and let Adam decide if it's a jolly good time or ho ho horrible. Hold on a second. Mm-hmm. Um, Lynch sent me a Bob Denver song. Oh, oh sorry, John Denver song. <laughs> Called uh, although I bet you the Gilligan's Island probably dropped now. John Denver like called Daddy, don't get drunk this Christmas or something. He he sent me, which was pretty pretty heinous. Oh, I'm intrigued. And then also, I was listening to a Bob Hope uh, Christmas song, and then I realized, oh yeah, Bob Hope can't sing. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, he's a comedian. We had a coming album. You don't have to sing. You're right. a comedian, you know? No one goes, Dave Chappelle, why aren't you singing right now? Like, wow. Well, well, don't forget the uh, the song I introduced you guys to a few years ago called An Old Fashioned Christmas, parentheses, Daddy's Home. Yeah. About how they're all waiting for him and he gets in a horrific bus crash. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> all right. Sorry. We'll, uh, we'll get back to the game. All right. Well, it's been several years since we played this game, so let's recap the rules. Each round. We'll play up to 60 seconds of a lesser-known Christmas track. Before the show, Brian and Gina guessed how many seconds Adam would be able to take that tune. And when he can't take it any longer, he'll ring the bell, stop the song, and rant away. Or he can also decide to let it play out. At the end of each round, we reveal Brian and Gina's guesses, along with Adam's actual listening time, and keep track of who got the closest. It scored like the Rotten Tomatoes games. Whoever was the closest over the course of five rounds will win the game. Here is round number one. 
All right. He's going the distance. I go the distance with this one. All right. Well, that was called Zat You Santa Claus by Louis Armstrong from 1953. Gina guessed 23 seconds. Brian guessed the whole song. Wow. Actual listening time. We'll call it 60 seconds. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well done, Brian. I thought you'd appreciate the nostalgia factor, but like we get it. And then I thought you'd make some sort of announcement that Louis Armstrong's voice gets a little old. A little grain. Yeah, it goes a long way. It's yeah. you know there there is room in all our lives, I think, for a certain amount of novelty in the voice, as long as it reminds you of a simpler time right. or better time. You know, sure. kind of an Ethel Merman mm-hmm. or Burl Ives or something like Absolutely. that. People weren't traditional trained singers, but it it, it brings thing. you Cuts back. Through, yeah. It, yes. And I, I love and, and the auto tune and all that stuff is so annoying to me that <laughs> anything that has a real arrangement and real uh musicians and, and instruments, I'm I'm all in. All right, here we go. All right, round number two. <laughs> Gotta check the time. That was Merry Christmas Everybody by Slade from nineteen eighty. <laughs> Both Gina and Brian guessed that Adam would listen to the whole song. Actual listening time, 25 seconds. That voice was too too grindy for, so for the Christmas. It's, it's interesting because I wrote whole clip because it sounds like a John Lennon throwback and you would be intrigued. Oh, really? Yeah. It did sound like a John it Lennon. It sounded just like John Lennon. I wonder who produced that. Well, Chris can look into it. I actually knew that song. Like that song, Oasis covered that for a Christmas album. Oh, they did? Yeah, yeah. It's not very good. But at least I knew the song. Like, oh, that was a nice melody. An Oasis Christmas album. For like a compilation Ah. album. Mm hmm. All right, round number three. No, no, I can listen. I can hear this whole thing. You can flip open, flip over all the cards. Shocked and dismayed. Well, Uh you should know, first off, all right. Christmas. First off, I want joy, I want happiness, and I want upbeat. I don't want I don't want bummer. I get it. And even though this is a slightly the genre is a little it's not my scene mm-hmm. musically, as long as it's is it's 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 like to me it's like watching to me this is um some a kid is helping you paint a room. <laughs> And they're not very good at it. And they're not really doing it right. It's not how you would do it. But you like the idea. Hey, forever. I, I like the idea of I it. I get it. We're trying to be happy. We're trying to be upbeat. But, it's Christmas. But this so. is audio manufactured saccharin. But so for, I'm shocked that this is this song, though. It's got to be in the 2000s. Yeah, probably that was Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays by Sync. From 1998. Oh, that's insane. Gina guessed 10 seconds. Mm. Brian guessed 51 seconds. Actual listening time, 60 seconds. That's a pleasant for Christmas. It's not. Really? (laughs) Well, I I, I don't like that kind of music, but I, I, during the Christmas time, I'm fine. If that was playing in a movie and and some couple was falling in love in the 90s, I'd leave it alone. I thought I was going to give you a nosebleed, but Mm. okay. All right, and also for the Slade song we played last time, uh, that was produced by Chas Chandler, who was the original bassist for The Animals. They recorded at the record plant right after John Lennon recorded his album Mind Games. Drummer, so, right? Still had the vibe in there. Okay. Interesting. Same engineers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Animals. Mm. Don't bring me down. Is that The Animals? Oh. That's Eric Burden. And The Animals, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. For The House of the Rising Sun? Yeah. yeah, that's animals. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they had a bunch of animals. Had a bunch of hits. They don't really come up that often. All right, sorry. Where were we? We are in round number four. Mm-hmm. Those are kind of my two, my two things. I'm I, sorry. I went the distance with it. I'm sorry to sound so. I don't know, salty, but I didn't know that <laughs> it just had to have the word Santa in it for you to abandon all of your values. Uh, the problem, the problem is the, tough question, but Adam, you're compelled to answer. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Normally we do this and it's just that stupid auto tune mm-hmm. thing kicks in and it's, it, it's <laughs> such an assault so early that you have to make it stop. The problem with all these songs is they're pleasant. Yeah. They're not, they're not that skillfully made. Yeah. They're just kind of they're pleasant jolly. except for Slade who got to me. But, uh, it's like, there's nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm picturing myself in a mall shopping, and this is playing. I w- wouldn't wouldn't bug the shit yeah. out of me. Like you know, certain songs like um, 
Don't You Want Me Baby by Soft Cell or something where you have to just stop and go, fuck this. All right. Well, that was Santa's Coming for Us by Sia from 2017. Uh, I like Sia, too. I do, too. Gina guessed nine seconds. Mm. Brian guessed 33 seconds. The song went the distance at 60 seconds. I, too, thought he'd be annoyed eventually. But yeah. Mm-hmm. No? On to round five. Oh, ho, ho, from Balenciaga. All right, that's just no oh, good. Finally, Jesus. This, 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 because this one attacks. Yeah, that's a, that's aggressive. It it's aggressive. <laughs> that was "Tis the Season" by Big Frida or Frida from 2021. Gina guessed nine seconds. Mm-hmm. Brian guessed 16 seconds. The actual listening time was eight seconds. Yeah, oh. I needed that. Well, it got the five second deduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the fifth round. Oh, Gina, uh, congratulations. Second place, 174 feel, seconds off. I feel betrayed. Brian won the game with 79 seconds oh, off. Can we please play the tiebreaker song? Oh, maybe after the outro. Wow, that was garbage. <laughs> I can't believe how long he listened to that dog shit. Come back next time for more. Take that two. I am actually really curious about what you think of the last song. I'm all right with anything upbeat where someone can sing. <laughs> I kind of like the song. For Christmas. I like the belt buckle made of mistletoe better than the hat, but all right. Do Me each too. his own. Okay, just curious. I don't get He's an eight-year-old cowboy. Is that what he said? Wasn't John Denver also eight years old? He was writing a letter to Santa or something, right? Yeah. He was an eight-year-old cowboy. Is that what he said in the lyrics? That's, that's what he said, but I have a feeling that was the he feels like an eight-year-old boy. Mm. Well, let me hear that again. I mean, it bumped me because he wanted to make out with his mom. <laughs> All right. Very, very well. Yes. I like I like happy. I like upbeat. I had you go on the whole thing on that one. Around. Uh, mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said 31. All right. Let's see. Should we play that? Uh, let's oh, let's yeah. play the bail versus uh, custody thing that... Um, you heard me talking about with Mark Garagos. I, I think you guys will find this inter- interesting in that it's something you've never thought about before, but it's a big deal for him and a client. And so when so- and so when someone's incarcerated, where are they physically? Are they in a holding prison? Yeah, well, what happens is... Jail? Like here, uh, uh, Weinstein's probably in what's called the Twin Towers downtown. Mm-hmm. When he goes to court... They'll wake you up at 2.30 or 3 in the morning. Really? Yeah. That early? They'll put him into a court line. Then they'll transport him to the courthouse, probably go underneath the courthouse, put him in the lockup in the courthouse, in the criminal courts building, then take him up, and I think he's on the ninth floor. So he's then put into the holding tank adjacent to the courtroom that he's in. It's a lot of movement and a lot of chains and a lot of handcuffs and a lot of going through a lot uh, before you ever see a judge at 8.30 in the morning. And then shower, shave, whatever? Generally not. Generally not. I mean, sometimes you can get an order that you want to shower during more frequently during trial, but not often. So then you just show up. Would you convene with your lawyer? Yeah, you'll be in the holding cell. The, presumably your clothes will be in there. You can change out of your jail clothes if you've got a jury that's present into a suit um, generally, they won't let you wear uh, shoes that have laces because that's a, a th- you're a threat or can be a threat. Um, and you Not, can put normally here it is a suicide threat, but you're saying like a threat to someone else. Well, they say that the you know laces and you could choke and you could choke somebody, so it's a it's a safety issue apparently. And then you go into the courtroom. Uh, sometimes you're handcuffed. Sometimes you're shackled at your feet. And that's how you that's how you operate the case. Every time there's a break, generally you'll go back into the lockup again. It's a it's you have to see it and not become cynical about it to understand how how much of an obstacle it really is to get in the case done. It's very difficult to talk to your client. Um, 
for any prolonged period of time. It's very difficult to show documents. It's very difficult to have them digest the documents. They're carrying it around. They have to be careful because they don't want some, especially in high-profile cases, you don't want some snitch getting into your files to find out information that, so they can fabricate a supposed confession or something like that. It's a, There's a lot of things you have to think about and manage that you wouldn't if somebody was out. So it's just, in a, in the world of tens and hundreds and thousands, it just makes a, a pretty substantial difference to have somebody free it's, I when you're often, trying the case. I often think it's the difference between winning and losing. That's really? The, yeah, and that's why that Al Pacino thing resonates, because he says the with the difference between winning and losing is an inch here, an inch there. It makes it, it's, it's so true. And then, like we said, the optics as yeah. well. Yeah, the optics is clear. Look, if the juror's in the hallway while they're waiting to come into the courtroom, and they see the client out of custody with his family walking down the hallway. Well, you're, you're instructed as a juror, you're not to consider anything other than what's on the stand. Right. But uh, you can't forget something like that. You can't how they interact with their family, how they interact with their lawyer. Do, you know, do they seem to be a good guy as they're holding themselves? Are they an asshole as they're sitting in the hallway? All of those things are you know, potentially – Jurors recognize. I mean, jurors check out people's shoes, lawyers' shoes. They check out the, the whether you're wearing the same tie. They check out whether you've got a really nice suit or you don't have a nice suit. They think of all those things. When do you think uh, he might be out on bail? Is there a timeline? I, I think. I think before. I think you could see something in April. I think April. That's, yeah, I think you'll see something in April. Yeah, hey, thinks Weinstein's getting out. Wow. On bail. On bail. Yeah, he says they, because <clears throat> uh, that's kind of interesting. We talked about this. He was complaining that in the, I think it was the Chauvin George Floyd trial, that they were putting too many people up there saying, you know, I saw it on TV and I couldn't sleep right. after. And he was like, that's just a bunch of emotional stuff. It's not really the nuts and the bolts of the whatever. We're getting into this weird, how did it make you feel kind of realm. I started talking in the show about everyone and their feelings, and that's it's bled its way into the courtroom. And with Weinstein, at least according to Mark, there was a lot of, he was a bad dude. Like, he was driving me, and we got into an argument, and he told me to get out of the car, and I had to walk home. But that got admitted. Uh, but that's just him being a douche. That's not him raping somebody. Mm -hmm. So there's way too much of that in the first one. Which is true. If you, if you, all you have to, I mean, not all, but one of the things is you go, this guy's such an asshole, lock him up. Right. You know what I mean? But we're really there to try to figure out whether he committed the crime, not whether he's a douchebag or not. So uh, a lot of that stuff's going to get thrown out. I guess he's getting a new trial. And um, Is Garagos representing him or just no. his interest in the case? No, he had somebody was in the last, he had somebody in the courtroom for the last one in New York who was giving him updates and that's where you get into that that other thing which is what's going on in the court is not what's going on right. according to cnn right. when you get outside the court it's a big big chasm between what's happening here and what's happening there which is weird but that's the way we roll well, these days it, we've never talked more i think it, it, you know the word optics if someone said that to me when i was growing up i would I didn't. I would think they were talking about glasses or something. Mm -hmm. that. Now that's a word we all know. Mm -hmm. And optics seem to have never been more important. So when you see somebody shuffling in in shackles, probably in you know an orange you know scrubs, you just assume they did something to deserve it. Well, it's certainly and they're all haggard. They've been up since said, two in the morning. You and your wife right. and your kids walking in right. there. It's like you you you're going to take that guy away from her mm -hmm. and his eight year old and his seven year old girl and put him in the hole. Versus, oh, he came from the hole. He can go back to the hole, right. or he can stay spend more time in the hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he he also said like you know just in terms of just think about. I was telling you, I was talking to Mike Lynch and he couldn't come up with a joke for anything and he wasn't answering. And I was just like, you're cast out, yeah. buddy. And he's like, yeah, I am. Uh, think about that. You get up at 2.30 in the morning. You can't you can't take a hot shower and everything. You got to shuffle in your Freezing. shackles, yeah. wait here, yeah. then go there. 
How, how are you going to look in the courtroom? Right. What's your demeanor going to be like? And how, how are you going to, what if you have to take the stand, you know? Yeah. And you look, you look haggard. You, yes. you feel haggard. There mm-hmm. was a scene in Better Call Saul where Saul hires actors to sit in the courtroom and pretend to be the guy's family to make him look more sympathetic. Right, so right. yeah, this all, this, this plays well, out in social everything. I, uh, look, it, it look no further than, you know, you're going to bring, uh, your guy in there for you know domestic battery assaults. Uh, don't put him in a wife beater. Put him in a nice pastel cardigan. Don't call you, it a wife you, beater. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like put him in. Yeah. Put him. Find a nice Bill Cosby. Yeah. Don't call it a Bill Cosby sweater. But find a nice Cosby <laughs> yep. you know show sweater and put that thing on. I'll I'll never forget when I worked at Hugo Boss and a guy came in looking for a suit didn't look like a guy who shopped for suits very often and you know navy blue black pinstripe. I goes, what do you want? He goes something that make me something that makes me look innocent. Yeah. So this is what people are thinking about. Oh, yeah, but boy. I mean, like I said, Gergos will tell you a lot about just attire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're, they're trying to shave tents. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get things in, going in their direction, just just little bits and pieces. That's so funny you referenced the Al Pacino speech about uh, inches from mm-hmm. uh, Eddie Given Sunday. I thought I was going with Al Pacino in, um, yeah, in Justice for All. I'm out of order. You're no, out of order. Now court's out. No, I went right to football. I know. All right, let me tell you about Keeps. There's only two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss. Keeps offers both. Keeps, a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair uh, and a convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months in discreet packaging. Low-cost treatments start at just 10 bucks per month. Proven results. Keeps has more five-star reviews than its competitors. Check out the before and after photos, everybody. Prevention, well, that's the key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. It's Keeps, right, Dawson? If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Adam to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash Adam to get your first month free. keeps.com slash Adam. Quick break back with the news right after this. We had another very odd SNL last night. Uh, The big Christmas spectacular was sort of anything but, but they tried their best. Um, TMZ reports that multiple SNL staffers had tested positive for COVID. So Lauren Michaels decided to pull the live audience uh, and most of the cast. Tom Hanks and Tina Fey opened the show explaining most of this. And then they inducted Paul Rudd into the Five Timers Club. Mm. I think from what I saw, the only other cast member there besides Michael Shea, was Kenan Thompson. Uh, most of the show was best of previous holiday episodes with a um, a few fresh pre-recorded videos from earlier in the week. Tina stuck around to do Weekend Update with Michael Che, and they did it on stage in, like, director's chairs to an audience of Tom Hanks, Kenan Thompson, <sighs> and Paul Rudd. It's and a lot of pressure to laugh at it's, all. It's, no. It was just a very odd... Uh, I'll, I'll show you a clip that they kind of explain what's going on. And Tina was going to do update with me because Colin is not here tonight. It's not what you think. He's having work done. <laughs> so we thought we'd read these dumb jokes anyway and just see if we can make these guys laugh. Yeah, you guys ready? <laughs> you. Yeah. Hanks, Let's are go. you ready? May I call you Hanks? I'd rather you didn't. Okay. <laughs> and can we confirm that you have never heard these jokes before? Not at once, except the two you blew in the rehearsal. Okay, great. <laughs> right. That's how they did Weekend Update. Well, was somebody else laughing? They have crew. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's good. I think yeah, that was about it. Sounded it. like a can of laughter in there. I mean, from writer to backstage. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, it's on with Omicron, man. Everyone's <laughs> getting it. I hear it's it's like seventy. Hmm. I'm trying to think what that number was. Maybe seventy times more transmissible than Delta. Mm, so super transmissible, but, but not, not harsh. Not hospital inducing for the most part. No. So the good, the good news is many of the people who I've, so there's, there's two, um, there's two crews. You can, you can listen to the sort of official line and then you can listen to guys like Alex Berenson who's been on the show and they're the Alex Berenson's are always ahead of what's coming next. So they'll be going, here's what's, Here's what we're doing. And then Alex Berenson, three months before that, I go, now nah, everyone's going to have to get extra vaccinations. Sure. The vaccines wear off. All this shit's going on in Israel. They already got the data. They're not giving it to us in real time because, it, you know, so it's everyone get vaxxed and this thing will go away. And Stand he's going, message. it's not it's not going anywhere. It's, it's not going away. 
flu strain. Well, is our new- it, it looks like everyone's going to have to get it. So why not get the less virulent version of it that is super contagious? So a lot of the guys early on with Omicron went, this may be the way out. Mm-hmm. Everyone will get it. They won't be devastated the by logic. it. Uh, because uh, like I was, there's some s- statistics like NHL's getting s- slammed by the hockey leagues, getting slammed by this NFL's getting slammed by this uh, NFL's getting slammed by this NHL's like a hundred percent vaccinated. They're getting slammed. Uh, NFL is like 95% vaxxed and, uh, NBA is like 97%. They're all vaxxed up and right. they're all getting they're all getting slammed. So you're going to get it. You may have a probably going to have a better reaction yeah. if you're vaxxed up. Speaking of 90 Day Fiance, I think that's what he's from. I don't know if, if you watch the series, but there was a news story over the weekend that one of the guys who was kind of one of the breakout stars died from it and the reports that he wasn't vaccinated. So I think that's the point. Get it. Get boosted, get vaxxed, you'll probably get it. You're going to survive and you won't be on a ventilator. I think everyone in New York is going to get it. They're all waiting in line now. They shut down Broadway, Gina Grant. I know. Again, I know. But maybe we're getting back to uh, chicken pox parties or whatever that's they had what, back in the I day. Went to. I think everyone's just going to have to get it. And uh, if you're vaxxed, you'll, you'll be fine. And I, Or even if you're not, if it's mild, you'll probably be good if you're not fat and youngish. Yeah. Well, I got it from Beth and Katie, and we had to go to Rob and Stacy's. That was mm. very normal. You go, just go to the next kid's house. In Scissor. Obviously. Okay. Okay. Uh, Draco, probably not a name that you were familiar with, but rapper uh, Draco the Ruler reportedly dead <sighs> following a backstage stabbing attack at Los Angeles' Once Upon a Time Festival concert. That was yesterday as we record this. He ripped that name off from Harry Potter. Draco Did the he? ruler. Dra- Draco Malfoy. Oh, there you go. Uh, the nominal villain. You're mm-hmm. that nerd. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh, there were there were Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, Fifty Cent. Everybody was supposed to go on. TMZ reports that the singer, whose real name is Daryl Caldwell, died at the hospital from his injuries. The LA Times identifies the victim as rapper Draco the ruler, reporting he was attacked by a group of people while backstage, stabbed in the neck. And was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Um, who are I? Who are the folks who can stab someone in the neck? I feel like that's a certain breed of cat. Cold you know blooded. I mean? like, could yeah, you that's, imagine that's just plunging a knife into someone's neck? No, I cannot. Short of choking the death, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Veins of ice. So Snoop Dogg canceled his set. Uh, this was at Exposition Park. And mm-hmm. uh, the rest of the show was canceled. They had probably another hour to go. My neighbor, looking like a hot-ass thirst trap on her way there yesterday. I didn't see her come home. But apparently people, you know, the rumblings in the crowd. Somebody was stabbed. And then, you know, people are hopping over the fence to get out of there. Did Do you think it was like someone's crew? I mean, who? Probably. I mean, this was backstage. They had so laminates? <laughs> I'll find out. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are with me, but... Uh... Whenever I got the laminate, everyone was like, oh, let's get a picture. And then at some point, the guy's taking the picture and goes, oh, hold on, hold on. And he always comes up to me and pulls the laminate sure. off. I was like, I like the laminate. It's yeah. a little time date stamp. Right. This is, yeah. You know where you were. Yeah, absolutely. I'm all over the place. I do a little drinking mm-hmm. on the road. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure where that picture's from. That. <laughs> but I want that laminate. Yeah. I still have all my Corolla Cruz laminates and my Laughs with Ball Brian oh, laminate. Oh, how about you? Yeah. How about so stabbed in the neck and dead. Yep. And we'll figure Show out canceled. who did it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jake Paul back in the news. YouTuber Jake Paul knocked out former UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley in the sixth round in Tampa, Florida, Saturday night. I'm going to show you the clip. I don't know if you've seen it yet. It is crazy. No, I haven't Um, seen it. Fox News reports that the fight ended suddenly after Paul threw a hard right, sending Woodley face first into the mat. Uh, Paul previously beat Woodley last summer via split decision. Um, This is just, I don't know, 10 seconds. You'll see the knockout. He has done it from time to time. Just haven't been oh, oh, wow. overhand right, and it's literally like, I mean, he his face broke the fall. Yeah, that was straight. That was straight down. Yeah, Tyrone Woodley was he was the king of the octagon like six, seven years ago. He was really on a roll, pretty unbeatable like just dominant and then he got knocked out and then he just keeps getting knocked out and it's, it's okay. time to hang up the gloves. Well, if you want to hear some conspiracy theories, the other thing that was sort of trending is that fight was rigged. It was rigged. And I, like an idiot, went on Reddit to see what all the hubbub was about. Get ready to play that clip again, because I think what some people are referring to is 
right before Jake hits him, you see him like twist his hands, and mm-hmm. that's like a sign, like I'm going for the knockout. I don't know, but let's watch it again. Who twists his hands? Jake. Uh, like he just did some little uh, twist nah, move. No, nah, that was just overhead. He Reddit just... feels strongly about this not being a. Nah. I don't know. You, you don't need to get hit that hard. I mean, you know. Sonny Liston probably took a dive against Muhammad Ali, and people don't even know where the – they didn't see the right. punch. You know what I mean? Like, you, 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 there's a lot easier ways sure. to take a dive right. than a clean shot right right behind the ear with a big overhand right. And if you're signaling him, that's a very subtle signal. Yeah. You could have made it much more obvious. You're not going to yeah. get an argument out of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Garland in the news uh, with a – with a couple of fantastic quotes, uh, Sony Pictures Television has terminated him from the ABC sitcom The Goldbergs. His departure is effective immediately. The Goldbergs will be without the family's father in the middle of the show's ninth season. Kind of a little bit of a Roseanne, the Connors situation. Cast learned of Garland's departure during Wednesday's production meeting. HR investigated Jeff Garland following a series of allegations about onset misconduct. Following the probe, it became clear that he had to go. Garland did not dispute this. He supposedly said it was mutual. Um, as to what happened, Garland said in an interview, we There's have no dip- such yeah. thing as like a, a probe that ever works out, yeah. really, because it, it used to be the probe used to be, have you fucked any interns? <laughs> now it's like, were you a douche yeah. when you were getting trail mix yeah. to an intern? Or when somebody banged on your dressing room door, did you fucking yell them, just go away, I'm on the phone, or whatever? Like, if now the probe figures out whether you're a douche. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing about Roseanne Barr or, or Jeff Garland. All comedians are douches <laughs> when they're not pretending to be happy and funny There's and carefree. Yeah. They're all pretty shitty and douchey Ellen when Rosie. they're wearing their fucking Crocs and their sweatpants. They got up to... That's also... Um, they never really factor this in, but um, comedy and stand-up comedy, that's a thats a late night. That's, oh, a, that's a nighttime thing. drunk You got to be on at Hollywood Center Studios at 645 for fucking hair and makeup. They're not morning right. people. They're in a bad, they're in that fucking bad morning mood. Five or six hours of sleep. Yeah. They're, they're comedians. They're douchey in the first place. And all we have to do is is prove again we don't have to prove that you threatened anyone physically or fucked anyone we just have to prove that you're a douche yeah. to people who got who were underlings and by the way everyone's an underling because you're True. the star of the yeah. fucking show yeah. so every, all the people you're dealing with is a craft service person or Make the props up. or whatever and if in fact you are a douche and you should be nice but the probe reveals that you were disrespectful right. or you didn't treat them with this with that which never happened. Well, let's let's hear a couple of quotes from Garland himself. He was uh and also comedians, many of them Garland's this way, Tim Allen's this way. Their shtick, it's 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 not really my shtick, it's not a lot of comedians, but some have that shtick where they they roast people a little. Like, where'd mm-hmm. you get that dress? The five and dime, you mm-hmm. know, like they'll do it. And now, by the way, when you write that down in a transcript, it seems pretty shitty yeah. to say. But Rude. when they're saying it, they're fucking around. Sure. They're they think taking they're the bust, piss out they're of They're busting blo- balls. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So in the first, uh, he said in an interview, the first quote, we have a difference of opinion, Sony and myself. My opinion is I have my process about how I'm funny in terms of the scene and what I have to do. They feel it makes for a, quote, unsafe workspace. And then in the Variety magazine, he defended his uh, alleged actions as silly, said he was a hugger and had not been told about any aversion to this practice, even while admitting that the show's human resource department has spoken to him three times in the last three years about his conduct. Three times, fool. I'd love to I'd love to go back in the past and explain about our black simile professor being fired and this guy's a hugger. That's a problem. <laughs> really? What do you do? <laughs> he hugs a hugger. Well, I certainly hope that we look at overly <sighs> huggy males more harshly than women yeah. because if I ever run for anything yeah. or if I get super famous, I mean, who have I not jumped on just to say hello? I, I like I like a hug. I like a bring it in. I don't want to get uh, blacklisted. Yeah. My thing is like, I'm not a hugger. I'm a drug her and then banger in my trailer. 
Yeah, that's you know what, what I mean? that's that's when, I, trouble, when yeah. I speak to the people I'm, from uh, HR. I that's understand. That's what I say. Don't say that. Don't say it. I wouldn't say that to HR. I'm not a hugger. Well, they know I'm a comedian. Right. I'm not a hugger. I'm a drug her <laughs> into my trailer and banger. You might get a chortle, but you'll definitely get arrested. But they know it's there's a context because I'm a comedian. Right. Like Jeff Garland. Could be suspended yeah. with pay. Yeah. Right. So uh, they got rid of Callan, too. They've had... Oh, right. Brian Callan got right. a little... He got kind of half tooed. That was a while ago, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that was... Uh, was that around the sort of Crystal Lee, Brian Callan? I feel yeah, like that was kind there, of a some, There's some half tooed people. Yeah. They weren't all me tooed, but they were kind of sort of in there yeah. or something. So uh, they're thinning the herd over yeah. there. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, Ooh. Now opening for Ted McGinley. That's right. <laughs> oh, he'll Is he still step acting? up. Is he still working? He I didn't mean, act when he was right. acting, Brian. Come on, <laughs> he's a face man. A really he's like point. me. It's you know what I mean? Right. He's a look. He's an attitude. Yep. He's a style. Yeah, yeah. you got to bring him vibe, so you know, demographic. Say. You know, yeah. responds to that. Yes. I bet. But I, uh, he steps in yes. season whatever yes. when the when the dad leaves. God, I bet he's aged like mm-hmm. a fine wine. Mm. Then there's. Uh, Valerie Harper. Yeah. She stepped in. Yeah, for Rhoda? No, she stepped in for what Duncan family or whatever. Oh, Sandy that, D- Hogan family. The Hogan family. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God, I'd, I'd love to see a recent picture of Ted McGinley. I wish we could have done that, you know, in my family. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like season four of me being on the planet. Hey, mom, you're out. We're going another direction here. <laughs> We're looking for someone who cooks. Yeah. Has a little better demeanor, possibly a hugger. Mm -hmm. Either way. Florence Henderson, in. Florence Henderson, you're in. Mom, Mm -hmm. out. Dad, uh, sorry, but James Brolin is going to be playing your part. He likes, (laughs) like, he's got a four by truck. He's got a Malamute. Yeah. (laughs) He likes camping. So, uh, sorry, you guys. We're just, we're going a different direction. Yeah. Creative differences. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Man, I wish we could have done that back in the day. That would have been awesome. Mm. Uh, so not a lot of news, at least that we've talked about since the Texas abortion ban and sort of the way they've tied the hands of people uh, to sort of tell on each other and collect a bounty. Well, it doesn't seem like a great idea or a great precedent, except to Governor Newsom. He's actually down with this idea, not for the abortion bill, but for ghost guns and for assault weapons. He's basically saying, um, if that's the precedent, then we'll let Californians sue those who put ghost guns and assault weapons on our streets. If Texas can born a if, if Texas can ban abortion and endanger lives, California can ban deadly weapons of war and save lives. So are we all going to adopt this Fakakta idea? Well, you know, if you really think about it, I was, uh, we got to remind me, Max Pat, we'll get into um, Gilded Cage for the minimum wage Gilded Cage chapter for 50 Years Will All Be Chicks. I saw this thing coming like 12 years ago. I was saying to actually Dr. Drew uh, during some of the uh, 26 hours I was watching volleyball, I, I said, you know, we're in this thing where COVID has deputized a lot of fucking people to tell, yeah. you know, put the their mask up. You know, I've never had more people who are, you know, scratching out a living, mm-hmm. telling people that we're paying a little more in taxes, uh, here's what you need to do. Mm-hmm. And, and and citizen on citizen, just passing oh, yeah. somebody on a trail or something, mm-hmm. hey, mask up, you know. I mean, it's funny, you can kind of tell neighborhood to neighborhood, but like I got a friend who lived in Venice and he said, you go jogging in Venice, you get told the mask. Yeah. Now, La Cunada, different demo, not so much, but where you are, you'll get, so we're in a new deputization of people era, abortions and ghost guns and masks and- Kyle Rittenhouse. I'm, yeah, me and uh, me and uh, Mike were on the, the shuttle and uh, going to LAX and had the, had the couple tell, tell Mike and me to get the mask mm-hmm. up and, you know, it, we're there. So we're on, it's on. Like yeah. Maybe everyone's, maybe that's the new era. <laughs> You're like, a, like we're all that sort of, it's just a militia well, now. Well, that's why I like, and it's not the NRA. It's another coalition, um, Firearms Policy Coalition. That's mm. why I like the intellectual honesty of those guys who are coming out in support of, of the... Uh, support's the wrong word because I'm going to do a double negative. Who are coming out against the Texas abortion law. Mm-hmm. Because they said, you know, this isn't our cause, but we're next. 
and oh, we don't yeah. want to we don't want this to be the new normal when it comes to taking away people's rights. So whether we agree with abortion or disagree, we don't want this to become a precedent. So we're against this. We're going to be and also we're talking about making California an abortion sanctuary state where we're going to go come here. Mm-hmm. We'll get you. We'll pay for the hotel room. We'll pay oh. for the ticket and you can come here and drop off your fetus and we'll we'll do it. So it, it, yeah, everything always creates something sure. something else. Walkable. That's that's how it works. No, you're right. And I know this wasn't the original topic, but you know what's interesting, which as someone who's never been pregnant, I've never really thought about Um there, there's a lot of like, you know, abortion causes trauma. And I imagine for some people that's true. But then I read an article saying, you think abortion causes trauma? What about being told you have to carry this baby to term and give it away? Because everyone says like, oh, adoption, it's easy. Just do adoption. I, I feel it would be much more traumatic to be told you must carry this baby. And now you must, you know, if you can't care for it figure out someone who can. I, I think that's probably pretty traumatic. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I th- uh, adoption's yeah, weird. Everyone true. has their own kind of head on adoption. Like, you know, some kids feel lesser than because yeah. they're adopted. I'm like, I don't know. I, I feel like you should love your adopted parents. Like <laughs> sure. they, they didn't forget to pull out. They went through a big, long procedure to get you sure into, their, rejected many times. In, Joan into their lives. That's a line and then Mommy Dearest. Some women, it seems very noble yes. to do that. And then others have, and it's like abortion. Some people, some people would be devastated by mm-hmm. abortion. Some people don't think about right. it that much. I, I, maybe it's about religion. Well, I don't know. Yeah. And it's interesting too, because I, a couple people brought this up online. Um, and again, this is not something I've experienced, so I, I can't say for sure, but you know, I would imagine, you know, people said, well, then how about why when women miscarriage, have a miscarriage, are they so devastated? And I said, I think it's because the, I, the idea of what they were about to have is now gone. It, it might not be the collection of cells per se. I don't know. But it's their all their hopes and dreams were wrapped up in this idea. And that idea is no longer well, they were, the, the devastated by the miscarriage people, the people are trying to get pregnant. That's right. So now you're not. Yeah. It's it's, just, it's all very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. One more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, since we were talking about Springsteen, let's uh, applaud him because he's a hardworking blue collar guy. And I think he's going to land on his feet now. After a month of rumors, Springsteen has struck a deal to sell his master recordings and publishing to Sony Music for... $500 million. Billboard estimates that Springsteen's catalog averages $12 million in sales a year, combined with $7.5 million a year from publishing, which would value at about four hundred fifteen. So they want to put a little sugar on top. I like that La Mirada song. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What's it really called? I'm a rocker. I'm a rocker. Uh, Springsteen has remained with Sony's Columbia Records since he launched his career and was given ownership of his earlier albums back in the 80s as part of one of his contracts. The $500 million deal tops all other deals that artists have struck in selling their publishing rights in the past year. We're I talking, will. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Bob Dylan, Paul Simon, Stevie Nicks, Lindsey Buckingham, McFleetwood, Neil Young, David Crosby. I will. Uh... First of all, it's got to be a nice little retirement nest egg. No, you're just going to sell your catalog. And it's all fine with me. I'll okay the deal. But when you're given the speech up on stage about how they closed the mill, my dad came home with his hat in his hand. He said, son, we're eating beans tonight. I need you to work the $500 million catalog (laughs) sale after taxes. Oh, And also you got to pay. Well, take go ahead and take 10% off because the lawyer's getting that. Let's call it 200. Yeah, let's call it 200. <laughs> Two, three, hundred <laughs> million. million. Yeah, just work that into the story about the mill closing. I think that's fair. All right, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Super Bowl's coming soon enough. Yes, it is. Looking forward to some Jeep commercials mm-hmm. and stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Looking, looking forward to that stuff. All right, uh, Portland Helium coming up this Wednesday, Thursday. We're all going to be there doing live podcasts and live stand up. You can watch Dawson get drunk in real time, everybody. So, uh, you going to be on the flight? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Helium Comedy Club will see you this Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, also, you can check out our chassis channel, 687 on Pluto TV, and watch Uppity and Shelby American, the 24 hour war, Nikki Lada, Dot. 
TikTok. It's all it's all there. And going to race with Adam Carolla. It's a fun show to watch there as well. You can watch uh, Truth Yeller. You can go to uh, dailywire.com slash Adam. Sign up for membership. Until next time, Adam Carolla for Stephanie Motto and Gina Grad and Ball Brian say it. Mahala. It was basically like an MMA fighter who doesn't want any trouble, but he somebody, somebody, you bring somebody it. just yeah. fucking bumped him at a bar right. and spilled a beer on him. And told him to go fuck and himself. Told him to go fuck <laughs> himself. And so Jimmy worked on his first fart as we're like going up the freeway on ramp uh, out of Toluca Lake. And uh, T. Chance just looked over his shoulder and said, oh, is it on?